Hello everyone, welcome to the program. It's Friday and this is Politics Today live on China's television. I'm Sean Kimbale. Let's get to it, everyone. Our countdown continues. We'll look ahead to the 2023 election. I'm excited. I don't know why, but I just believe that it's an opportunity for Nigerians to be able to make their decision as citizens and elect those who will lead them for the next uh, four years. So that opportunity presents itself from February next year up until March. 92 days, and we're counting down to the election day. Nigerian, Nigerians, count with me, hashtag Nigeria decide, and let's anticipate the election day. Well, so much to talk about tonight. You know what? From yesterday's program, there's a lot of reactions, and we'll be getting reactions to what Mr. Babachi Lawa said um, it, does, it, didn't, it didn't go down well with a lot of APC chieftains. The endorsement of the Labour Party candidate by a former SGF uh, under the APC government who said, look, the APC has not done well by the pairing that they had on the ticket, the same fate ticket. So we'll be getting some reaction from someone who is of the same region, whether or not some of the comments made by Mr. Babachi Lawa, Old Water, we'll be getting some of these reactions. Stay with me, everyone. But first and foremost, let's check out some of your political roundup stories. The Director General of the Social Democratic Party campaign organization, Mr. Solomon Dalong, is calling on candidates of political parties to focus on issues during their campaigns. The former Minister of Youth and Sports Development told a news conference in Abuja that insulting statements by political parties during the campaigns are capable of engendering violence before, during and after the 2023 general elections. Incidences of violence that has characterized campaigns of the so-called mega political parties Violence is likely going to be a tendency in the 2023 general election. A federal high court sitting in Abel Kutaogun state has nullified the candidature of the African Democratic Congress governorship candidate in the 2023 general elections, Mr. B. Otegbe, as well as the party state assembly's candidate, stating that the primary elections which produce Otegbe and the state assembly candidates were not conducted in accordance with the provision of the Electoral Act. The Labour Party had approved the court, asking the court to compel the Independent National Electoral Commission not to recognize Mr. Otegbe as the governorship candidate of the ADC. Governor Nasser Erofai of Kaduna State has inaugurated a presidential and governorship campaign council in the state with a call on the citizens not to go back to the dark days of the People's Democratic Party, which he says brought the country almost to his knees. Governor Erofai says the APC-led government has done well in the past seven years, especially in the areas of human and infrastructural development. He, however, apologizes to those who might feel offended during his administration. He, however, apologizes to those who might have felt offended during his administration. Oh, I tried to do the last seven years is to try to make a business statement. Some I offended intentionally. People like Joe Sina who we who blocked our loan for four years. Even those ones that I don't need to apologize to, I apologize. Progressive Congress APC in Kwara State has received tens of thousands of defectors from opposition political parties in Ilorin, the Kwara State capital. The defectors were led by dozens of former heavyweights in the People's Democratic Party, the Social Democratic Party, the NNPP, African Democratic Congress, among others. The Social Democratic Party's governorship candidate in Ogun State, Anthony Ojeshina, has unveiled his economic blueprint, which he tagged Developmental Revolution, to reposition the state's economy for a better life. Addressing journalists at the State Party Secretariat in Abel Kuta, the state capital, Mr. Ojeshino notes that agricultural, industrial revolution, and critical infrastructure are the thrust of his agenda for the state. Developmental revolution. There has to be a revolution of sort. We're very poised for it. There you have it. You've been served, everyone. And let's get to it, to our very first conversation. From yesterday's appearance on this program, a former secretary to the government of the Federation, Mr. Babache Lawa, several reactions have continued to trail his comments. Some members of um, a group of Northern Christians in the All Progressive Congress APC have distanced themselves from the endorsement of Mr. Peter Obi, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, by Mr. Babache Lawa. 
The group is led by Mr. Babachi Lawa and a former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Yakubu Dogara. But in a statement, eight members of that group said Mr. Lawa spoke for himself, adding that a collective decision will be announced soon. Why the choice of P2B specifically? First of all, we are politicians and we are realists. Uh, you have to use, we are told you that we want to support a political party that has the potential to win and potential to rule. And then to address all the other dynamics of the society. What are these dynamics of narrated one? Marginalization. There's insecurity. A cry of all inclusiveness. So you look at it. There are only four political parties that are worth our discussion. And we've discussed with them, except as I said, you are a big friend, the APC, the big party. So, and they have all uh, shown a, a good inclination. And we, Concourse Hall is, uh, is a good material for presidents, for example. We discussed with him, but we looked at his system, the tendency, the uh, chances of winning the election based on our parameters is very small. Uh, looked at the Labour Party, we think the chances are very, very big, and we think that a, a party, a, a government of, run by Peter Obi and um, Deti will give Nigeria the desired peace. Mm. It, in fact, it will win us from this oligarch. Did you get any commitment from Peter Obi before making your decision? Look, we don't need a commitment. The issue is very simple. If you go to every Christian village in Nigeria, they will tell you. There might be no candidate for the other political posts, but they will tell you we are doing Peter Obi. Well, that was an excerpt from the program of yesterday. Let's get some reactions now from one of the chieftains of the APC from the northern, northeastern region of the country. I'm being joined by a former commissioner in Adamawa State, Mr. Ahmed Sajo. Thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. Thank you very much, my brother. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm laughing. Well, anyway. Are you, you're amused by that? Yeah, I'm amused. I'm amused. I'm amused. What, what is he amusing, actually? Yeah, it is. Why? I, so? I have tremendous respect for Baba Chirilawa. I see him as an elder and I see him as a leader. I respect him. But you see, sometimes when people are talking from emotions and not from facts, you get, you get amused. The, the whole thing about politics is about electoral value. It's not about um, assurances on, in the media like this. In 2015, Babachir Lawal, was the national vice chairman APC for the Northeast. Mind you, the Northeast is predominantly Muslim. If it were cons in consideration of religion. Is it so? Yeah, it is. It, it is, is a fact that. It's that, a fact. That we have, we have six states. We have six states. Yes. Borno, Yobe, Bauchi, and Gombe are all predominantly Muslim. Even if you give Taraba and Adamawa some 50-50 some or thereabout. So that, but if it had come to religion, we, we, Baba Chir will not have been our representative. But that never was the consideration. He was considered on that. While he was national vice chairman APC, his own village of Kwambla is almost nearly 100% Christian. And he is a Christian. He's a Christian leader. And the ticket at that time was not a Muslim Muslim ticket. But we lost his polling unit. We lost his ward. We lost his local government. So but, 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 but was that on account of a Muslim Muslim ticket? Now, I come from the same state with him. My local government borders his own local government. We are both, you know. Did, to did you win your polling unit and your award? Or you lost it too? We, 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 we won. We won. And your That's local one, government two. Your... Wait, wait. My local government is 90% Muslim. We've elected Christians as chairman twice. Presently, the candidate for House of Assembly in my local government is a Christian. We have not used religion, you know, in determining but, but capacity. Is, is it, I mean, so this can, one they are you, introducing. Can you invalidate some of the things that he said yeah, uh, uh, about the fact that the Christians in the northern region of the country have not really been given the opportunity, politically speaking? I, I, I don't know what he is trying to say. I come from Adamawa State, and I know that in the 
population within Adamawa, we are almost 50-50 Muslim Christians. That's why anybody can, it's, it, he's saying Adama is a Christian state, it's a fallacy. We're almost 50-50, and we've lived harmoniously. But if you go to Adama, for example, the civil, civil service in Adama state is more than 70% Christian. Reason, of course, is that the Christians through the missionaries had opportunities for early education much more than the Muslim population. And in most states, in, 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 in northern Nigeria, and perhaps maybe in the country, the Christians have greater advantages when it comes to opportunities for education. And nobody has said, I heard him saying, they don't promote them and the rest. I don't believe this is true, but he has served as SGF for almost two and a half years. Let him come out with figures of what he did in respect of uh, the marginalization he is talking about presently. We cannot, when we are in position of responsibility or, or, or if we are dining and whining with the powers that be, pretend we hold a certain position, and when we are out and dry, we hold a different position. So you're saying that there is nothing as marginalization of Christians in the North? I don't know what you mean by marginalization. I mean, let you me, heard him clearly. I'm let asking based on let, what he let, said. Let, let, let me he tell you. He has said, Mr. Sajo, yes. that Muslims have been marginalized in the northern region of the country. Uh, and they have Christians, been pushed, sorry, Christians. I mean, Christians, rather, that Christians have been marginalized in the northern region of the country. And he's one further to say, look, that they have been pushed to the back seat when it comes to appointment and political recognitions. I, I don't know why, why, where he got, the, where is statistics? He made an example. He gave an example. Rather. Okay, what example? And he, he gave an example of vice chancellors of, of the Northern and, University. And he mentioned Amadou Bello University. And made, mentioned Amadou Bello and several the, the, other universities the, 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 wait, in the North. Wait, Dr. Just Alexander, moment, Dr. Just Alexander. Moment, just a moment, yeah, let me okay. learn another. And he said, hardly would you find a Christian from the North heading any of those institutions. That's what I'm saying. Dr. Alexander was the first vice chancellor of ABU. Uh, um, um, Shai Audu was a vice chancellor of ABU. Daniel Sao, who is a chief, was a vice chancellor of ABU. I come from, he said, polytechnics, the same. I come from MUBI. There's a federal polytechnic in MUBI. Uh, Mr. Akbam was our, was our rector. Engineer Odegu was our rector. What is he saying? I am saying, bring the facts on table. And, and, and let me put it this way. We, I am still asking him, when he was the SGF, what, who and who and what did he do about it? How many people were appointed directly under his own office? What did he do about it? Look, let us, I, I remember when he was made the SGF, during the service at Echoa Church, he mentioned that it was not northern Muslims that made him SGF. It was southern uh, people mentioned, Tinubu mentioned Baba Konde. But don't forget the president that had the prerogative to make him SGF was a northern Muslim. So sometimes when we get too emotional, we make statements that we cannot right. naturally so, uh, so defend. Let's take another point that he made. Okay. And I'd like to ask you very quick questions, which yes. will get me into another. And the first being that, is it fact that Christians are minority in the North? In terms of population yes. numbers? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Is definitely. it also fact that Christians are more vulnerable based on their population politically in the North? I, 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 I don't know what that means, actually. I don't know what that means. Because if uh, Baba Chir can be SGF, after him, Boss Mustafa, another northern uh, Christian, can be SGF. I, I don't know what In the terms of voting uh, presence and voting uh, uh, capacity and presence in the north, are Christians uh, recognized as a force in the north, in the, your party? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 and I'm giving, is it not in my party that... Baba Chir was made SGF. Is it not in my party that Boss Mustafa is now SGF? 
Are they not Northern Christians? Is it not do in, in votes, my party? Do their votes, I'm coming, sir. Do their, do their votes it, carry weight? It did. Is it not in my party that Dogara was Speaker of the House of Reps? I mean, do, do, it, you, 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 you think that they, you know, if they were marginalized, they will arrive at that level? Do, remember, uh, David Mack was Senate President for how long? Is he not a Northern uh, Christian? I mean, if, if they were marginalized, would he have been, you know, the, 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 the Senate president? Don't forget, at a, at a certain point in time, David Mack was the, the Senate president. Ekwere Madu, a, a Southern Christian, was the, was the deputy Christians president. Are Christians angry with the Muslim Muslim ticket of your party in the North? I don't think so. I don't think so. But Do you the, think the, the this, it, it will harm uh, your party in any way? There are people who are emotional, like Baba Chirlawal. You cannot, you cannot excuse them. You cannot say they shouldn't exist within, 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 within our region. But they are there. But that does not mean that, one, that does not mean that politically we have marginalized our brothers. Who are, I told you now, my local government is 90% Muslim. Go and find out. Our candidate for House of Assembly is a Christian. We don't see him as a Christian. We see him as our brother. We see him as a capable person. We see him as somebody that can deliver. That's all we see. Listen to this, Mr. Sajo. Yes, sir. Surely, these are the words of Mr. Babachilawa. Yeah. APC same faith ticket is intended to shame Christians and bestow on them and their religion a second-class socio-political status in their own country. Those are the words of Mr. Baba Chilawa. That's, those are his words. He's entitled to his words, but it's not true. Can, it's you, not true. can you invalidate them with more facts? Yeah, I will. Go ahead, you know, please. Northerners, Christians and Muslims, like all other Nigerians, are concerned with their lives and livelihoods. And that the disasters that we go through does not choose. That the difficulties we, 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 we encounter as human beings in our life you know, does not have a religious face. Nobody goes to the market to say, because I'm a Muslim, I must buy from a Muslim. Nobody goes to the hospital and says, because I'm a Christian, I must be treated by a Christian. We're all looking for people who will make our lives better. And that is the bottom line. Those that are playing religious politics, I am asking, what have they done to better the lot, the lives of the Christians, in, in fact, within their families? Morally speaking, is it right to ignore a religion on a particular ballot? Morally? Mm -hmm. there, is, there, is, there is nothing like ignoring a particular religion. It's, because it does look like that is the it, grievance it does, of it does, it does. some. I mean, if not, I'm not sure the group of Northern APC Christians would have come together anyways. Look, uh, Sean, let me ask you. There are states in this country where we have Muslims and Christians cohabiting in those states. When they have a governorship ticket of Christian, Christian, or Muslim, Muslim, we, we have the people, it, <coughs> is there any, any moral uh, question in that? We've been electing these tickets over and over. And in any case, you cannot show me one state in Nigeria where you have a homogeneous 100% people of one religion. But there are states in this country where we have Muslim, Muslim tickets for governor and deputy. We have Muslim, Christian, Christian tickets as for, for governor and deputy. Let me, we're not talking, we're not, we're not looking at it. Let, from, let me ask from you this angle. question. Yeah. If there was an APC Christian Christian ticket, would the North vote for such a ticket? Postulation, I don't know. But I believe that if there is a Christian Christian credible ticket, I will vote for it. No, no, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about you, you're pointing out realities. Yeah. in your region of the country. No, in, even asking, in, in the, re in the country itself. And I'm asking itself. you that if you say that the reality is that, well, nobody cares about Christian or Muslim or religion in the northern region of the country. So I'm asking you, let's flip the page. There is this conversation because there was a Muslim-Muslim ticket. Yeah. What if it was a Christian-Christian ticket? In some part of the south, it may not mean anything. But in the northern region of the country where you were born, where you were raised and where you have lived and worked, 
would a Christian Christian ticket fly for the people of the North? Well, I, 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 have, uh, uh, I, I have an answer to that. Before we went into this uh, politics, there was a micro-politics within the military in determining the leaders. Have we not had the Christian Christian leadership in this country? Did the country come down? Did anything happen to the country? Did anybody even, you know, go to die because of that? You know the reason why some people are raising this matter? Yeah. Because they feel, oh, the same reason why people think, uh, the southerners think that it is the turn of the, of the south to have a president, same way it, some people think that there should be some balancing when it comes to the issue of same faith or faith issues on the ticket, on the ballot. And, and you know, me, let me also uh, drop this one to you. We've had a situation where everybody was given an opportunity to produce a candidate in an electoral system that represents uh, the, the, the best possible nomination process we could do under the political setup. Why would people reject people of their faith and elect another person, and they turn around and say, we don't like somebody of our, t our faith. All right. Papa Chilawa said, your party will be punished for that decision. Do you have the fear that there, more, that there is a likelihood of that anger in some Christians in the northern region of the country to vote against your party really? because of the, I mean, what they have said, called the ignoring the Christian faith on the ballot. Well, You're a politician. Yeah, I'm a politician. Do you think that that is a possibility? Because politicians are being punished for different reasons at the, at, at the, at, at the election stage. Yeah, but... Either because but of lack of performance, as, or as, lack as, of trust. As, as a politician, yes. Chewing, if you come to me to talk, I will assess your electoral value. What matters in, in a politics, in, in an electoral political system, is electoral value. I'll look at you and ask for your electoral value. And I told you that there are people who brought a ticket that you think by your own estimation is balanced in their place. And that ticket lost, not because of uh, the, 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 the faith of the ticket, but because the people promoting the ticket do not have electoral value. And so no matter what you do, the anger that you are trying to insinuate. Not me. Well, members of your party. The, the anger that they and are talking about. The reason why they said they endorse the, Peter I Obi. said the anger they're talking about mm -hmm. is subject to the level of their electoral value. If they cannot deliver at the time when they had a ticket they were comfortable with, what will make them deliver today? Does it mean that there is no Christian in the northern region of the country that can... Uh, run as a running mate with your candidate? But that is, that is the decision of the candidate. It's his prerogative. I want Shea Wong as my running mate for, cert for certain reasons. There are reasons. Well, this, is a, this is politics. Mm. He has his own reasons for determining he, that this is the person I want. He made an analysis with. and he said that in the southeast, your party will not get 25%. In the south, south, your party has no chance. And he mentioned about seven or so states in another region of the country where he thinks the party doesn't stand a chance. On what grounds? So he explained it yesterday. Who? Baba Chilawal. Baba Chilawal, who cannot determine the electoral fortunes of his party in his village, will sit down here because he has access to television and he has access to Sheung to ask him questions. He start permutating about political... As a former SGF. I agree. As in power, in, in terms of political positions, yes, he had a very high position. But in terms of his electoral value, I want him to start telling me what are his own electoral values beginning from his... But what his he said, village. I mean, look at what he said. I'm looking at what he said. He said that your party does not stand a chance. But I am telling you that he does not represent a credi Can credible you speak to assessment. The issue? No, yeah, leave yeah. the man alone. Yeah. Let's talk about the issue he raised. Yeah. He said your party does not stand a chance. Our party stands a chance. Explain to us how your party stands a chance in the Southeast. Would, mm. would uh, the Southeast vote your party against uh, Peter Obi? Well, 
we, 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 we have at least we have two governors in the southeast, and they, they, we have some political heavyweights in the southeast. If if the southeast did not like the party completely, why do why are these people found in our party? No, but Bachelawa explain the reason why I think your party does not stand a chance. And you prefer and his wonder... reason to my? No, no, I'm asking. I'm trying. Uh -huh. No, leave me out of it. <laughs> leave the personality. Um, just see, <laughs> see me as a, uh, a bunch of Nigerians asking you these yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you represent your party. I do. So, no, the question is, he, he gave analysis, and I wanted you to analyze also to defend your party because the reason That's... we're having this conversation was because the man spoke against the chance of your candidate and your party yesterday and he endorsed the labor party and that's why we are asking you that he said your party does not stand a chance in fact your party will come a distant third well that's his own analysis so what is your own analysis my own analysis is that my party will come first okay uh Bolatinubu was in baramoto kingdom today and uh, he had a few things to say. He was, uh, in fact, he was being given a chieftaincy title. Not only him, uh, most of those who went with him on the presidential campaign of the APC also got some chieftaincy title, including sitting uh, ministers and the governorship candidate of the APC in Delta State. Let me allow you to listen to Bala Ahmed Tunubu, the presidential candidate of the APC. One, how many times has it been running? Always on the run. It's always on the run. And he's tired. Tell him to go and sit down. Enough is enough. The other one, that one, he think my statistic will go chop. A <laughs> <laughs> lie with arithmetic that never, no Indian can stop it. To measure his name is a disgrace to me, sir. I won't mention the name. Wrong arithmetic, wrong statistics, the warehouse economy, and that. that's not what Nigeria needs. Uh, Tunubu, the presidential candidate of the APC there, uh, that was in Baramotu Kingdom earlier today. Uh, to wrap up now, we had another guest on the program, and based on what your candidate said, he has put pitch himself against two of uh, uh, the frontline yeah. candidates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, I mean, he's, he speaks as though he's better than them. And the man, the Labour Party spokesperson, said that Nigerians cannot vote for Bola Tinubu based on some of the reasons he gave, and that yeah. he thought that... Uh, well, that we may not be able to stand shoulder to shoulder to some leaders of the world. As a, as a final thought on the program, based on what Bola Tunubu said in Baramoto Kingdom today, how would you defend your candidate? What would you be telling Nigerians in terms of the capacity of your candidate to be Nigeria's next president? Well, uh, what, what, what they, in, a, in a very short and simple thing, uh, you know, uh, we have a candidate that says, this is what I have done. And, 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 and given an opportunity, this is what I can do more. Uh, it, it, you know, it's not uh, like saying, give me an opportunity. I, I know how to do it, but I have not done it before. No, our candidate says, this is what I have done, and this is what I'm capable of doing, and this is how I'm going to do it. And, 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 and that is the basis of uh, our campaigns, and this is why we are saying that uh, Bolati Nubuid, and mark you, of all the candidates that are parading themselves as presidential candidates, none has this pedigree of identifying talents, nurturing talents, and allowing talents to perform to the best of their ability 
in the govern within the governance space. That is one advantage Volatinovo is coming with. Thank you so much indeed, Mr. Hammer and Sajo, a chieftain of the APC and former commissioner in Adamawa State. Thank you so much indeed. And a, for and a member of the PCC. And a member of the PCC. Immediately, immediately, that, that, that seems to be a, a, a national position <laughs> because tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, you will say that that trumps uh, uh, the Adamawa State appointment that you had because that's the national level. That's <laughs> how you politicians that's see it. <laughs> You've moved up. I've yeah, moved up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good friend. I'm, Mr. I'm grateful. Thank sir. you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, maybe you need to be speaking to some of your Christian friends in the APC because are, some of them are not happy. We will understand. The other, other. the other part, I mean, the other side who said, uh, Mr. Babachi Lawa, oh, that yeah. those are his statements. I understand that they are with the PDP. We will understand them. We will understand ourselves with our <laughs> brothers. We have lived right, long thank enough. You. We'll take a break, everyone. And when we return, it's going to be a time for us to take a critical look in the document that INEC has released. They released a guideline and the rules of engagement for campaign. In fact, they're giving their own rules on the amount to be spent by political parties and the donation anyone can make to any political party. I'll be speaking with the chairman of the president of IPAC, Alaji Abagisani, next. Join us again. and National Electoral Commission, INEC, has warned individuals, political parties, or candidates not to contribute or accept more than 50 million naira in donations. The commission has also banned the use of any offensive weapon at party campaign rallies except security agents authorized to carry arms and were posted to the venue. But well, this is contained in a new document just released by INEC and the guidelines and the conduct of political parties processions and campaigns, as well as finances and election expenses of political parties and candidates and aspirants for the 2023 general elections. It was released earlier today. So you have it, there's different segment of that document uh, from the public, uh, uh, political public campaigns to the conduct of, uh, uh, of conducting the campaigns, the kind of people that must be there where specify the designated venues for any campaign and also even the limit of donation to any political campaign and in fact the period of campaign what happens when there is a clash in venue of two political parties it is also in this document let's speak to um, the chairman of uh, the interparty advisory council who is also a presidential candidate um, of the adp uh, Alaji Yabaji Sani joins us live on the program. Thank you so much. Good evening, Shun. Thank Appreciate you for having me. Yeah. I, I can conveniently call you <laughs> Alaji White White. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I see that you, you always come in this. Um... Well, electoral art has specified some of these things, but it does look like there is a reason why INEC is coming uh, with some of these guidelines. And it was, um, it was heartbreaking, actually, to know that over 50 persons were said to have been killed uh, or injured um, uh, in the early stage of um, of the campaigns, uh, which brought to I mean INEC and the Inter uh, Party uh, Council on Election Security together to meet, especially when two offices of INEC were were burned down in uh, Ogun State and in Oshun State. First and foremost, are you impress impressed by the conduct of your colleagues in the polit other political parties? in this election cycle, in the, I mean, considering the kind of violence that we have seen so far? Well, uh, nobody will be impressed with what has happened because we are talking about lives and property that has been, uh, have been damaged and some lost, you know, so there's no way anybody will condone, I mean, uh, uh, that kind of uh, uh, infractions, you know, uh, and what does that, you know, uh, portend for the country? It's a uh, retrogression because when there's violence, when there's obscene use of money, what happens in most cases is you get incompetent people elected. And when you get incompetent people elected, uh, what happens is that the country, the country continues in this uh, vicious cycle of no progress, uh, of retrogression. And that's why 
nobody will support you know what has happened so far. But so thank God, disappointed in the in the conduct. But, but yeah, but yeah, thank, God, the, uh, thank God, thank God, thank the, God, the, the the authorities have stepped up to the plate. You know, Mr. President himself has come out you know very strongly against it that it can be allowed to continue. And uh, IGP too, you know, was very much uh, around. I mean, he, he had a meeting with us, and the only reason why we had that meeting was because of what you said, you know, the, the dangerous development. And again, but you look at who are the perpetrators of this, you know, uh, uh, this uh, the study act, you know, that happened. It's not, believe you me, it's not the managers of political parties, you know, not, not the chairman. Uh, to some extent, not even the candidates. There are elements that take advantage of these things when you have a gathering of, you know, uh, uh, politicians or political activities, you know, taking place. So when you investigate, you will find that some of these things are not particularly because, you know, uh, the, the, the political activities taking place. No, it's because there are some maybe uh lingering crisis you know somebody is looking for an opportunity and then they take advantage of it and then uh try to uh visit harm i mean to wherever they want to attack so what i'm saying is that uh before the commencement of these elections we had peace committee national peace committee and we signed you know as chairman as presidential candidate and what have you and even within our own you know uh confined, I'm talking about IPAC now, you know, we have a committee that is discussing with uh, chairmen and candidates on the possibility of having what you can call a unity government. What do I mean? It won't be winner takes all, you know, at the end of the day, so that you can reduce the intensity, the frustration, I mean, the kind of uh, uh, recklessness that, you know, comes, you know, in, in form of uh, election uh, campaigns, rather. So, I think politicians rather are, 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 are people that I believe are responsible people. I'm talking about candidates. I'm talking about. But have they shown that in the manner in which they have campaigned so far, and well, in the rhetoric I, that have been I, pushed out? No, it's, it's below the expectation to say the truth about what has happened because. Uh, even a while ago, I listened to one of the candidates, and I didn't like the kind of languages he was using. You know, that is not uh, what we expect. We say we are going to conduct this campaign with the high le highest level of, uh, you know, a decency and only on issues. Why? Because the country is already almost on a crispy. You know, if, if we care is not taken, we know the tendencies, we know the, the, the restiveness that is, you know, on the land. So we cannot come again and then... And, uh, you know, uh, heighten those, you know, uh, uh, fault lines, which we are trying to forget or put behind us. I'm talking about ethnicity, religion, and uh, what have you. So, yes, the language being used is not what we expect. And I think going forward, uh, the handlers of those candidates will, I'm sure, talk to them so that we will have a rank of free, you know, campaigns. And leading to the election so that we have a free, fair, and credible elections. I like the Yama. Uh, because, like I've always said yeah. all the time, yeah. mm. that when democracy fails, the biggest losers are the politicians themselves. We are the first casualties, you know, in, 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 in that circumstance. So we should behave, you know, responsibly. We should behave as those that have the, the biggest stake in the in the in the in the whole uh, exercise. Yeah. I wanted to draw your attention to. Uh, and I know you, you might be affected also by this, uh, 50 million naira, that is the benchmark of the donations permissible by law, by the guidelines that INEC has released. How feasible is that? Oh, it's very feasible because, for instance, if you look at that law, section 88, 89, and 90, you know, I think 88 tries to specify the limit that uh, a presidential candidate can spend, which it says 5 billion naira. A governorship candidate can spend up to the limit of one billion naira. Uh, senator will have uh, 100 million, and uh, House of Reps will spend 70, 70 million. You know, million. But again, you see, that's not where the problem is. That's why I'm saying there's no limit. Believe you me, as as much as as to what you know you can spend. Because now, when you go to 89, you will find that why it talks about the expenses, campaign expenses by political parties. Is to manage a candidate, manage aspirant, or something like that. It says that the the amount of money spent, you know, ex the expenses by political parties will be determined. 
you know, by the electoral body in consultations with the political party. You know, and it says that it doesn't put a limit to how many people can com can contribute the 50 million naira that I've talked about. So the political party can say we have 1,000 people that contributed this 50 million, and that's you know. So which means you can spend as much as trillions of naira, oh, and you can you it can says that 50 million by one person. One as, person, yes. What, what that that a, a donation is, can be made by a person. Yeah, this is a country of how many people? 216, they said, million people, and you have people that are in the parties who can say that okay. But it's also said in the previous in you find, it, that you can spend more than five billion as a that is, presidential that is the candidate, not the party. Not the party. So the you party, can put some expenses under the party exactly. and still put it under the presidential when, campaign. Once you become a candidate, you are the property of the party. The party spends on you. So it should be together as a party and as a candidate that you can spend more than $5 billion. No, no, no. Because what the law no. says here is that the maximum exp election expenses to be incurred by a candidate at a presidential election shall not exceed $5 billion. Exactly. By a so candidate. That's the point I'm making. Yes. That you are saying that that, that section should actually refer to both the candidate and the party. Is that what you're saying? No. What I, yeah. For you to make meaning, to have any, 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 uh, 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 to, make, to make any sense that you have a limit. You don't have a cap. So there's still a vacuum in this. There's a huge vacuum there. Very huge. That even before the INEC can determine what I spend as a party, they have to, con we have to sit down together. And they explained to them that this one was for, for logistics, this one was for this, and this is for, for, for uh, mobilizing people and things like that. You know, printing posters by the party and things like that. So there's a huge, you know, uh, loophole there, if, uh, if, if, if you look at it critically. Uh, I mean, it's obvious, isn't it? Yes. That, I mean, maximum, the, the, the subsection 2 yes. of section 88, yes. uh, which talks about limitation on election expenses. And let me read it again for our viewers to, to hear again. The maximum election expenses to be incurred by a candidate by, uh, for at, a, at a presidential election shall not exe exceed 5 billion naira. Candidate. Mm. Mark the word candidate, not the party. And so subsection 2 of 89 says election expenses incurred by a political party for the management or the conduct of an election shall be determined by the commission in, in consultation, consultation with the political parties. Yes. So it gives you an open check. More than open check. You've had an open bank. Interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, the other areas that uh, these uh, the guidelines that ANEC release are spoken about, if you have two political parties having a clash on date, it says the first that gave the notice either to the police or to INEC will be the one to, to go. Uh, and sense. it talks about the fact that you shall not uh, campaign in religious centers, police stations, and public offices. No, you know, as uh, Action Democratic Party candidate, our party will have a policy right from the word go that we are not going to disturb you know, religious centers, because it's like intrusion, you know, into uh, a place that you must give due respect, I mean, highest level of respect to. So we believe to to campaign in such places, you know, is, uh, uh, to us, it's, it's not acceptable. Is there any distinction between appearance and campaigning? Because, uh, as it were, um, two things. I could appear in a, in a mosque, for example, and my appearance alone is seen as, you know, luring or wooing voters, you know. And I could easily say, uh, you know, Nigeria would be great, you know, and that could be timed as, as a campaign. Or what, what is the line, the distinction? It's a very thin line, but... Absolutely. Uh, but, yeah, it's a very thin line, but... You, you appear know, in a religious center. Exactly. Your if, appearance if, alone could be... No, if you pray to God that, God, please make Nigeria greater than what it is. <laughs> you know, everybody will accept that. You know, and people can say, Amen, you know, in the, the loudest voice or whatever, <laughs> when you say it. But when you now start talking and start talking about yourself... Vote for me and yeah, all that. Yeah, for me and things like that. That's act absolutely not acceptable. So as Action Democratic Party, we don't do it. And we're not going to do it. Or would you, have you seen any of your colleagues in the, in the field doing that? Well, I think I've seen some that goes to church and then uh, some even say, church, take back your, 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 your country. Mm. So what's you that think thing? that religion and ethnicity will play a major role in this election? Nigeria, I mean, from what we have seen so far, mm -hmm. 
if you look at even the so-called frontline uh, uh, candidates, what does it tell you? It tells you that the fault lines, that is the, the, the tripod that Nigeria is sitting on, each one of them has come out to say this is our own. And even the candidates themselves do not hide it. It or B does not hide the fact that it's running on the, on, the, on the claim that they have not been given a chance to rule this country as a civilian uh, administration. Uh, the administration. As Bolatinibu, it's also the same thing. Say, Miloka, that it's now the turn of the Yorubas. And uh, the article says, don't vote for anybody, vote for me because I'm from the North. That's the only qualification that they are saying that they have. Nigeria should have gone beyond this. We have gone, we, we must have, you know, I mean, look at the kind of country we have, the promise of this country, which is greatness. It's not based, it's not based on ethnicity. It's not supposed to be on religion. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be on the language you speak or something like It's supposed to be on ability to deliver. And that's why anywhere I talk, I tell the people that I'm not campaigning on the basis of ethnicity, what have you. In fact, I don't even represent any one of them, All right. those sentiments. What I represent is capability, and, intellectual capacity, yeah. and focus, and the ability to deliver. And that's what Nigeria is looking for. Thank you so much. Alaji Yabaji Sani, the presidential candidate of the ADP, thank you so much. And the national chairman of Interparty Advisory Council, thank you so much indeed thank for, you, Sean. Thank for you coming for having there me. on this, some, of, some of these issues. Well, that's our show for tonight, everyone. I'll see you at 8 p.m. on Sunday. I'm Sean Akimale. Bye for now, and God bless Nigeria.